What's up guys, it's John Howell here from officialjohnhow.com and I'm excited to give you another edition of what's happening in the market right now with John Howell, if you kind of call it that. Alright, so in this video, obviously anything I do show in this in, in this video right now is general advice only, okay? I don't know your circuit, I don't know your situation, your circumstance, you know, you disclaimer, 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 you know what I mean, right? Like, it's important to educate yourself and not just add a disclaimer there, but it's important to educate yourself. Anyway, let's actually look at this right now. What we're going to look at this right now, what we're looking on the board right now, and I apologize about the lighting, but um, my lights are coming right now to, to, to brighten up this whiteboard a lot more, and obviously the roof lighting just went out, and I have no idea how to change it. Now, I know that's pretty simple, right, but it's one of those old-fashioned light bulbs, and I've had five people come over to check it out. Anyway, um, <laughs> that's another story. Um, Right now we're looking at two things, right? We're going to look at two things right now on the charts. First thing we're going to be looking at the S&P 500. Okay, that's what we're going to be looking at right now on the charts. And the first thing I'm going to look at right now, I'm going to show you exactly what I see, is the longer term time frame. What is the longer term? What's the bigger picture saying? And that's actually that's actually the, the weekly chart we're going to be looking at. The weekly chart we're going to be looking at there and show you exactly what's happening on the weekly chart to get a longer term view of what's happening on this on the bigger, bigger scale. But because it's always important to keep an eye on the bigger scale, right? But then for you, what we're also going to be looking at is also going to be looking at the shorter term time frame. And this here would be the daily chart. Okay, that would be the daily chart. And we're going to look at, we're going to tie the weekly chart, we're going to tie the daily chart, and bring it all together to show you exactly what is happening right now in the markets and what we can expect moving forward. So, without further ado, let's get to the charts. Okay, so let's have a look at the charts here and let's actually see what's happening in the market right now. Okay, we're looking at the S&P 500 as of today and uh, we're looking at the market right now. So let's have a look at the weekly chart first. Okay, and we're going to see exactly what's happening on the weekly chart. Now the first thing you do see on the weekly chart basis, okay, is that I don't have many indicators or not much indicators on the actual chart itself, right? And the reason why is because I want to be able to see what is actually happening on the chart itself on an overall basis. Make sense? So the first thing I've done is just grab this simple trend line and as you can see right on the charts the markets came down, bounced, bounced here, bounced there, bounced there, bounced there. So we're actually continuing to move in a big strong upward movement on the on the uh, on on the weekly chart, on the weekly chart there, right? So overall we are continuing to move in a nice flowing upward mo move, um, momentum here. And it looks like as we're continuing higher, right? Pushing forward on an overall basis to the high side. And that's exactly what we see there. But let's have a look at the daily chart here. What does the daily chart see? Oh, what does the daily chart say? Well, right now, right, right now, what we can see, right, this is the weekly trend line here. Okay, this is the weekly trend line. But what can we see right now? The market's actually the market was continuing to move up nicely, stair stepping up, higher peaks, higher troughs, higher peaks, higher troughs, higher peaks, higher troughs. Higher peaks higher peaks now running back down to form a form a trough here okay then it's run and then, then it's run back up but look at this here right if i grab a trend line and i snap it through there as you can see right this overall level here was an actual area of resistance resistance here now it's become support 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 through here okay and now look what's happened it's formed a resistance so if that forms resistance that could actually form into now what We've got a peak up here, we've got a low peak here, oh, sorry, a peak up here, trough here, and now a low peak here. That could actually start to spell a weakness in the market. So, um, looking at this chart right now, what I do say is this, is that if we do form a low peak through here, okay? If we do form a low peak through here, meaning we just we just go down like this, okay? And we form a low peak, and we do that, and this forms a low peak, then that's actually a sign of weakness. And, um, and then, uh, and then, and then that's actually that's a very, very, very weak sign, right? Because what happens in an upward market? Okay, very, very simple. In an upward market, we have higher peaks and higher troughs. In a downward market, we have lower peaks and lower troughs. And if this is now starting to form lower peaks and lower troughs, then that's actually showing some selling pressure in the market. Now, what I do say is that it doesn't mean it's going to continue downward, right? And that's the reason why we have to be very, very flexible. I'll show you what I mean here. If you have a look over here on the chart, right? Look, look what happened over here. What happened over here? Well, firstly, right, we had um, trough, higher trough, higher trough, peak, 
higher peak, right? Now what happened? We made a lower trough, came down, made a lower peak, and we actually ran down, right? Ran down through there. Now, but what actually happened overall? It came down, made a lower trough, and this is the reason why it's important to be flexible with the markets. The markets make lower trough, lower peak, lower trough, then, run, then runs up, creates a higher peak, now a higher trough. Who just flipped control right there? We went from what? We went from uh, sellers, let's actually just do this here, all right? We went from, overall, right, we went from buyers in control, all right, buyers in control, moving to the high side, then we went from sellers in control for this time, now we're back to buyers in control. You see that? And by looking at the peaks and troughs, we had trough, lower trough, peak, lower peak, and then the, then we had a lower, and then we had another another lower trough through here. We were saying, okay, at this time, this market's likely to, likely to likely to continue down. But it run up, made this higher peak. That was the warning sign. Things about the change, and of course, it made this higher trough. We went from sellers in buyers in control to sellers in control to buyers in control. Make sense? So that's why I'm saying whenever we're looking at these charts, whenever we're looking at these charts and looking at what, what the actual market is telling us, it's important for us to say, or it's important for us to be flexible market. It might make lower peak here and lower trough, but it's important to be flexible market because it could, it could instantly, it could instantly come down, create a higher trough and run straight back up again, right? It could instantly do that. But all we can do is go with what the market is showing us right now, okay? And that's why it's important to read it, what the market's happening right now. And right now, the market is showing weakness that's sort of failing through through this level through here. You can see this bar. You can see the bar through there, right? Ran up, came down, and it struggled to... Uh, and it actually had some, some decent volume there, or uh, bigger volume than it has in, in the last sort of week or so too. So that's what I see in the charts, guys. All right, guys, so there you see it, right? There you see exactly what is happening on the charts. And we have two, two big things that is happening on the charts to determine what's happening right now. Now, there's a lot of talk out there, a lot of talk out there right now saying we're going we're to come from the high side and we're going to start breaking down. And there's a lot of talk out there talking about that. But what I do say is there's two things that you as a trader, if you look at the S&P 500 or apply this to any market out there or any chart, there's two big things that we need to keep an eye on for to see if the overall trend is shifting, okay? People like Harry Dent and a lot of people out there saying this market's gonna eventually come down. And uh, I believe the same thing as well too, but the charts are gonna tell us when it's gonna come down and not just some predicting uh, thing, right? So we, have, so we actually have two things on the chart. We have the weekly chart. Let's have a look at this here. On the weekly chart, right? What do we have on the weekly chart? The weekly chart, we had nice stair stepping to the high side. Continue moving to the high side. And this red line obviously represents that nice big long term weekly chart. We just went over the chart there. But as you can see, right, looking up here, what happened? It just bounced off that weekly chart and now it looks like it's struggling to push higher on the on the weekly chart, right? So, uh, or should I say, on the weekly chart, it's pushing higher, everything's still sort of moving forward. But when we dove down into the daily chart, should I say, on the daily chart, the daily chart looked like this, right? We had this big long run up through here, right? And then we had these nice peaks, trots, peaks, trots, peaks, trots through here. Suddenly what happened, out of nowhere, what happened? We came down, we came down towards this weekly, weekly support line, we popped back up. And around this point through here, this is where we're starting to struggle, right? This is where we're starting to struggle on the daily chart. So if this actually, if this is actually a turning point in the market, what would we want to see? Well, one, a few things here, right? One, um, the market won't break a new high if it's weak, right? So it won't continue up and it won't break past these highs up here. If it breaks past these highs, well, then we're going to have a nice continuum moving on the big weekly chart. Make sense? Continue moving on the big weekly chart. Then we're going to have a look on the daily chart, but the, 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 then that's a continuum move. But if we're looking for signs of downward movement, as in like a potential uh, downward selling pressure, maybe even a crash call of that. If we're looking for that, then what we're going to look for is we're going to look for this point right here to start turning to lower peaks and lower troughs, right? In an upward trend, we clearly have higher peaks and higher troughs, right? You can see it through here. Higher peak or high peak, higher trough, higher peak, higher trough, higher peak, so on and so forth, right? Where peaks are higher, our troughs are higher. Something simple as that, continue moving. The bigger, the bigger long-term trend says the market's moving up. But what may break that 
is this point right here right now. We're actually seeing some struggling in the market right now. And right now, as we're getting on, on in that chart we just saw, we can actually see, right, that this level, these levels through here, on the actual daily chart, they're actually now acting as, as resistance. And if that resistance does hold, and we start to actually start to push down through here, and create, and then create this, this point right here, and then create a lower peak, now we're getting lower peaks and lower troughs, then that may be the thing to break the trend line, right? If we actually start to get lower peaks and lower troughs, it's going to start heading down. And if it does head down, it may be enough, okay? It may be enough. We don't know. We're just, that's the reason why we've got to keep an eye out for it. But it may be enough to break the trend line. And if it does break this trend line through here, right? This big, long, weekly trend line, then that is a sign of major, major weakness and a lot more weakness to come, right? Because it's held it for so, so long there. Now, it doesn't matter whether it can just crash right down. Nothing, nothing ever goes down like just like that. Nothing ever just goes up just like that, right? But when we're actually looking at these markets, there's two things here we need to keep an eye out for. Um, and again, apply these to any of your charts right now, okay? Apply them and I promise you it will be such simple analysis. As you saw my chart, I think I just had volume on there, uh, and, and that's all, right? So as you can see, weekly chart, we're pushing higher, and daily chart, if we start to form that lower peak right now, we actually start to form a lower peak, and we start to push down lower, yes, we're going to come up to the weekly trend line, but that may be enough for it to break it. And if it does break this weekly trend line, then we know the tune is changing from buying mode to selling mode. Why? Because now we're getting lower peaks, um, oh, oh, we're getting now lower peaks and lower troughs. If you have a look over here, we now we were stair stepping higher, right? If we have a look over here, we were stair stepping higher, creating upward movement. But then suddenly, what 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 changes? If we start to get this, right? We've got a lower a lower trough here. Market and upward trend, we're creating higher peaks. Suddenly, we get a lower trough, which we have right now. If it runs up and creates a lower peak, who's in control? The sellers, right? And so therefore, what is likely to happen is that we could start to form, a, instead of forming an upward channel, I'll use this as an upward channel, instead of forming an upward channel, what are we likely to see? We're now likely to see a downward channel form the plate, and then suddenly we, we see the market go from lower peaks to lower troughs and start to do this type of thing. Make sense? And we, just, we saw it on the weekly chart, but that, that's, a, that's a simplified version but now we're in an upward channel, now we could be now heading down in a downward channel, moving forward there, okay? Make sense? Anyway, so that's exactly what I see in the S&P 500 right now. We are, we are actually struggling right now. We're pushing higher on a longer term basis, so the bigger picture says we're moving higher. That's exactly what we're looking at for right now. But on the daily chart, the daily chart says, hey, we are struggling at these areas of resistance on the daily chart. Now. Um, that's exactly what I see. Now, before I wrap this up, I actually want to teach you one little technique you can use in the market right now to help you when trying to see where the overall market is likely to go. Okay? Is likely to go. Now, let's have a look at this here. Uh, I use this as a projection tool, and you can use this on any market out there. It doesn't matter what market you trade. You can use this on any market out there, and this is a very, very, very good tool for me to see, okay, where is the market likely to go if it moves forward in the direction I think it's going to. Let's actually take the S&P 500 here, for example, okay? What's happened here, right? We started moving up, okay? We started moving up, and so we came down, and as we said before, right, we gave this lower trough here, right, like we said before, right? Now what's happened in this market right now? What has happened? The market's ran up, and now it looks like it's starting to struggle on the daily chart, right? Looks because you can see that the downward, the downward pressure is now starting to, it, it's, it looks like it's struggling there. Here's, here's, a, here's a bit of a thing here. When we're looking at this chart here, we've now seen this lower trough here. If the market does start to do this, create a lower peak, Instantly, instantly, what I do personally, if I look on the daily chart, I'll do this. I will draw a trend line, okay? I will draw a, a trend line from the peak, okay? And I'll just draw it straight down, just, just connecting that peak through there, okay? I'll just connect that. And what I'll do is I'll grab this exact same trend line, the exact same, you know, you can create like a parallel trend line on, on, your, on, your, on your chart. And then I'll just click that and then adapt it to here, right? 
and then what that will give me, what that that will give me is a projection what is likely to happen moving forward. Now obviously we have a longer term time frame coming into play right now, which is the weekly chart, okay? Which is probably somewhere around about here, okay? On the, because remember this is the daily chart, that's the weekly chart trend line, makes sense? So on the daily chart right now, we, if we start to form that lower peak, I'll instantly draw a trend line down, connect it, bring it down to, the, to, this, to this trough through here, and then that will give me a projection. If we do break this trend line through here, we start to form that lower, lower trough, and we continue moving forward, where is the market likely to go? And where it's likely to go is to the bottom of this trend line. It's a very, very, very simple tool, okay? Once again, I'll just repeat myself just real quickly. We made a lower trough. Market's been heading up. We made a high, we made a lower peak. If the market continues moving down, where is it likely to go? It's likely to go to the trend line. Same trend line there, snap it there, and we're likely to head down to the trend line. Now it doesn't happen, might not, it might not happen like that. It might go down, okay? It might go down, then up a little bit, and down, and up a little bit, and down. But eventually, eventually what I have found over time it makes its way down to the trend line, where, which is basically like making it making a trend line. Makes sense, guys. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this session here with what's going on in the market with John Howe. If you want to learn more about my trading style, my trading strategies, and what I do, then go to officialjohnhow.com. Or if you're interested more on my health side of things, how I removed the cancer, my health strategies, uh, how I lost uh, you know, 88 pounds in six months, and a whole bunch more strategies out there to help you become healthier, become a lot of energy, and understand what's happening in the market right now, and my personal trading income strategies, then head on down to officialjohnhowell.com, and I'll see you down there, right? Anyway, this is John Howell here. Remember, success can be yours if you go claim it. So step up, take massive action, and face your fears tonight.